So today we are going to talk about statics, and for the Maya students, this will be the last theoretical lesson. Okay, then I send the, the agenda, the schedule for you on a classroom, I assume that you all received. Uh, for the mechanical engineering, there are none now, okay, but I'm recording the lesson, so for you it will be. Uh, you will have to follow some lessons as this one. And I will update later on your agenda. Okay. We are, we are going to talk about uh, statics today. In the slides, uh, you do have uh, some uh, uh, preliminaries that I'm not going to go through right now, okay? I assume that uh, you all have uh, the background in uh, physics. If you don't understand what is written here, maybe you should spend some time uh, in, uh, you know, recover from those topics. So I'm going to, to skip right now uh, all the preliminaries, just needed to, to refresh your mind and to update you on the topic that are needed, or the basic concepts that are needed in order to understand a little bit the force interaction. And we just start with the statics concept. Statics studies the relationship between the end effect of force and moments and the joint torques when the robot is still. So when it is uh, at the equilibrium. Let us first consider this vector. This is a, a six dimensional vector and uh, I hope you appreciate the way it is written here uh, this double transpose is needed in order to have uh, a mathematical uh, coherence with the fact that the vectors are uh, columns okay so this vector is the vector of end effector force and moment Force, Newton, moments, Newton meters. So this vector, six dimensional vector, as often in, 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 our, in our compact representation, exhibits two unit measurements. So we should always take into account the, the fact that we do need sometimes to have compact representation of the equations, but in doing so, we lose a little bit the, the uh, physical concepts and we merge together objects with different unit measurement. We sometimes we call it uh, generalized force and it's six by one vector. Stiamo facendo lezione qui. Ah, non è un seminario. No, prego. We, <coughs> we shouldn't forget this. Uh, however, and the same is for the, the joint force torques. If uh, we do have uh, only rotational joints, well, tau is a vector is a vector where all the elements are expressed in Newton meters. But if we, if our robot alternate rotational and for example uh, uh, prismatic joints well prismatic joints are driven by linear forces expressed in meters we should always uh, uh, pay attention to our quantities okay now we are going to to find what is the relationship uh, between the end effector force moment and the joint torques let us first uh, uh, try to have an idea a intuitive idea of what we are looking for, okay? Uh, if I hold uh, an object, uh, 
This is a linear force, the gravity, okay, the weight of this, uh, of this um, object uh, aligned with the gravity is a linear force acting in the end effect. Now, how does this linear force map into the joint torques? In order to stay still, I need to apply a certain moment at the joints. But you can uh, easily verify that uh, the end effect of linear force now is the same if I move my arm, but the torque is changing. Look, here, I don't need any torque. All the, f the linear force is compensated by the structure. Let us assume that this is fixed, okay? So all the linear force is compensated by the structure. Assume that I only have three rotational joints here. On the other end, in, in this configuration, I, I do feel, let me say, the maximum of uh, the torque here. I need uh, an, a higher torque to stay in equilibrium in this configuration with respect to this configuration. We will discover that uh, the relationship between uh, the end effect of generalized force and the joint torques is configuration dependent. Okay, now we have just seen it intuitively, but we will see the exact representation for this. And uh, we are going to, to, to do it by uh, the principle of a virtual work. The elementary work made by the torque is Now, the way I wrote, this is a, a vector n by 1 transpose, and this is a vector n by 1. So this is clearly a scalar. Okay? This is the elementary work made by the tool, made by a small displacement of the joint. Okay? Work is forced by displacement. If our mechanical structure as a rotation of the field of freedom is torqued by angular displacement. Okay? That's fine, and the unit measurement is correct, everything is fine. Okay. What about the, the end effector? The elementary work made by the end effector. As usual, it's easy, okay, this is, as usual, it is easy for the linear part, okay? For the linear part, it's easy because um, it's forced by, multiplied by displacement. The scalar product. Now for the angular displacement, well, if I remember, the orientation representation, I do know that uh, the time derivative uh, of uh, the orientation representation does not have a physical meaning. Now I need a strong physical meaning by the displacement. And the way this is kept is by representing the elementary rotation as uh, the increment of the angular velocity multiplied by the t. Okay. I know that I cannot integrate this one. It doesn't have physical meaning, but this is an elementary displacement. Now, I know that I will, uh, I will apply the principal um, uh, the virtual uh, uh, the virtual displacement principle, not the principle. So let me somehow uh, make appear the joint here, the displacement, the elementary displacement here. Uh, we already have done this because I know that. Uh, The linear displacement 
is related to the joint displacement by the geometric Jacobian, in particular by the positional geometric Jacobian. Okay? And for the angular displacement, the concept is uh, absolutely the same. And so here I can write I can just rewrite this in a, in a, in a more compact uh, uh, way by observing that the Q is the same on the right hand side here of the expressions. And so I can write this one as system is in equilibrium, the elementary displacement uh, corresponds to the virtual displacement, and uh, the virtual work principles helps us, uh, it says, okay, the necessary, sufficient and necessary conditions for this system to be in equilibrium is that the two virtual worlds compensate. In, in the end, uh, the, all, the, all, the, the, all the virtual worlds should, should, should be null. In this case, the two should compensate. It means that we can say that those two, those are the elementary, but virtual one is just with a different symbol, are equal for any joint displacement. In the end, what we do have interpretation of this. We are going to, to exploit this relationship. It's possible to find the same uh, relationship by a different way, different reasoning, uh, by computing the power and the factor and joint motors, that is velocity multiplied by the force, uh, and uh, imposing that the power is not used to move the robot and thus should uh, 
be equal and the results is the same. That's not so important for us. What is important is that we have a way, or more than one way, to obtain this relationship. Okay, nice. So we can draw again our mapping as we have done for the velocity, for the linear velocity. Interesting. Now we 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 keep the end effector quantity at the right hand side. And here, say, okay, I have uh, the end effector, the end effector, a generalized force. If you have a look here, it's very small, but in slides and textbooks should be easier to read. This is uh, uh, the dimension of the end effector generalized force here is R. It's not necessarily six. Why? The same as when we study the end effector linear and angular velocity. If our structure, for example, is a planar uh, two-link robot, we only want to study the uh, linear velocity on x, y, and the uh, angular velocity on z. A similar reasoning is for the uh, end effector force. We are not interested in the other components that are by default all by the structure. But let us try to understand this, this uh, uh, mapping. We do have uh, the set of all possible end effector um, generalized force. And and Jeter's pose represent a mapping on the joint torque. Okay, so this is the rank, the image of uh, this mapping. That is a subset of all possible joint torques. Okay? Why this is a subset? Well, just one easy, easy consideration. If this is six and this is seven, I mean, dominion and condominium has different dimensions, so easily we do have uh, a image that is a subspace of all the space of joint torques. But there is also something else that is really interesting. If I have a, a mapping, I have an image and eventually I can have a null space or a kernel. It means that here I have a subspace of end effector generalized force that maps into the zero joint torques. I apply forces on the end effector and my joint torques don't feel this force. How is it possible? Well, one example is exactly this one. Let us assume that this is a rotational, three rotational joints, my, my arm. This is fixed. Here, I don't feel, with my motors, I don't feel the linear force given by the weight. Okay. It means that uh, here, my linear force is in the null space of uh, the J transpose. And we will see the planar in uh, some graphical representations later on. Okay. We will touch with our hands the Uh, we can appreciate somehow a duality between this mapping and the mapping uh, obtained for the velocities. Okay? Well, this is a little bit complex, but if you understand uh, this one, and we are going now to, to, to draw it piece by piece together. If you understand this uh, graphical representation of the duality, 
Well, it means that you understand quite a lot of, uh, of the role of the Jacobian in mapping uh, velocities and forces uh, along a, a robotic structure. here. This is, this is the set that is written here with this pattern. Q dot is n dimensional space. Okay? And we know that we can have uh, a null of J that is represented but all the joint velocities that they do map into the null and the factor linear and angular velocity. And we saw that for this represents the internal motion, seven degrees of freedom, my arm has seven degrees of freedom. Is if I fix this and fix the actinal factor, I can still move the joint. And this movement represents the, the Q dot that are here. They are in the new space of the Jacobian, and so the mapping to the end effector is zero. Mm. So we found this uh, mapping, and now today we have found the inverse. And we have here all the possible uh, uh, in the in the graph is M. Okay, the letters are different from uh, from the textbook because this is taken from a uh, another text. Okay, this is mapped into the this, uh, image of J transpose. Here and of course, I do have a larger map here, and in the same time here I have the node space of J transpose here. Yeah. It maps it to the node here. Okay. okay. Those are the two graphical interpretation that we have done separately in the previous cases. Now we have an additional information. If you look here, there is a, a relationship between those subset, okay? Subspace, sorry. And for the students of uh, dynamic systems, I think that we should uh, more or less recognize the relationship between those subspace. Here, look at this one. This is uh, the image of J that is orthogonal to the known space of J transpose. Do you remember, maybe, maybe you remember that we did need this property of matrices, 
in a couple of, uh, of reasoning during the decomposition, according to the, the Kalman decomposition. It means that in the end, we do have uh, a mapping among all those subspaces. The velocity is a joint, the image of uh, the joint velocity according to uh, the Jacobian, the null space of the Jacobian. However, we do know that uh, the image of J transpose is perpendicular to a street that here represent joint torques, the one that are not affected by the mapping of the transpose of the Jacobian. Let's I mean, have it here, and we will have a look uh, later on in order to, to try to, to, to better understand the mapping between forces uh, and torque and between joint velocities and linear and angular and effector velocity. Okay. If you remember, we studied... Studied one uh, argument for the differential inverse kinematics based on the transpose of the Jacobian. And it came out uh, with a mathematical reasoning. We applied uh, a theorem and uh, we just say, okay, in order the theorem, the stability theorem to, to be satisfied, if we decide that Q dot is equal J transpose K multiplied by the error. Well, we discovered that we are able to, to bring the error to zero in uh, most of the configurations, okay? Now, we can give uh, a physical interpretation to this control law. Because now, J transpose, uh, for us, now it represents a mapping between the end effector forces generalized forces and then joint torques. So now we can imagine that uh, KE is uh, a virtual end effector spring. Okay? My robot I want to go here this is my current and effector configuration. Let, let us focus the interpretation for the linear part. And the error is this vector, okay? X desired minus X. Well, a spring has a, a constant that represents uh, its rigidity. And now, K multiplied by the error can be considered uh, as a linear and effector force that I want to apply is a virtual and effector force and by the transpose of the Jacobian so this is a virtual and effector force by the transpose of the Jacobian I project this virtual force onto the joint torques okay but we are not controlling the robot uh, at a torque level, not yet. So if I assume that uh, I have uh, an ideal dynamics, let's say a simplified dynamics, I say, okay, let us consider this one as uh, a velocity. So this is the interpretation of the transpose bay based uh, uh, algorithm. And we can also now give the interpretation of uh, the mathematical results that the stability works as long as uh, K multiplied the errors uh, does not belong to the null space of J transpose. So 
questions. Now, the interpretation is quite easy in the sense that uh, if this is a mapping between forces, well, if Ke belongs to the null space of the, this mapping, it means that this virtual force is projected onto the null joint torque. It doesn't move the robot. Okay? So this is the physical interpretation of an algorithm that we found by mathematical derivation. Okay? It can be a little bit more easy to be interpreted. And now we have a uh, case in, of a robot uh, for which we do know that uh, this guy is in a kinematic singularity, so the rank is decreased from, from 3 to 2 in this case. And we already interpreted uh, as a velocity mapping, and we interpreted it, it by saying, okay, I can show you that you cannot obtain uh, all the uh, velocities that you want at the end effect. Now, the duality is, uh, okay, I can show you that there are some end effector forces that do project on the null joint torques. And this is exactly, if I apply a force that is perpendicular to the vector. Okay? I do not excite any of these degrees of freedom, so I do project onto the zero joint the interpretation under the algorithm for differential index kinematics is if I do need to go here, for example, if the end here for the on the on the on the perpendicular to the blackboard, and I use this algorithm, well I transpose into the zero joint torques and that, and the robot doesn't move. Okay? So this is a limitation of the algorithm. And we gave a physical interpretation to it that is fun. Okay. We can use the duality also in order to have uh, a velocity force, uh, the, the relationship that transforms the uh, force and moment uh, um, represented. In in two frames, both fixed to the same rigid body, and it means to the same link, for example. Now, we did compute for the uh, velocities this relationship, and uh, let us just see a little bit to refresh it. If I write it in this, in this way, is it maybe easy to understand? But uh, I can also write it in this way. And uh, I mean, this is always the same, but written in different in different ways. Uh, very often in robotics, uh, we use uh, the matrix uh, representation because it is more compact. But of course, if you are used to represent the velocities, uh, I mean, the propagation of velocities, so the velocities uh, of, of a rigid body, uh, this is probably the way that is closer to the, to the class of physics that you have done. You have the velocity of a point of a rigid body, and any other point uh, on the same rigid body as a linear velocity that is given by the sum of this one multiplied by the cross vector of the distance multiplied by the angular velocity. And we saw also the example of the disk and, uh, and we used in order to compute the geometric Jacobi, okay? But 
in a, in a mathematical, in a, I'm sorry, in a matrix uh, way, it is represented uh, in, the, in this way here. The last three rows simply says that, say that in a rigid body, the angular velocity is one, no matter the origin of the frame we consider. Okay? We made uh, a choice in the beginning of uh, uh, this class that uh, if there is no superscript in the uh, vector, it means that they are referred to the base frame. Okay? So those quantities are all referred to a base frame. Now, if I want to rewrite them in its own frame, I know that I need to use this one for the R12 is the vector that is connecting the original frame 1 to the original frame 2. Now it is expressed uh, in the base frame. And uh, if I want to, the relationship with the, the same vector expressed in its own frame, I need to rotate the vector, okay? We, we saw it is one of the, the very first uh, uh, property of the rotation matrix that we studied. It means that I can represent uh, every vector, linear and angular, in its own frame. For example, the linear velocity the angular velocity according to the same simple rotation. I'm not propagating anything. I'm just changing the, represent the frame in which this quantity is represented. And does it only need a rotation, okay? I can do it for the frame one, I can do it for, for the frame two, and then I can uh, use the rotation between frame one and frame two in this way. Let me write it here. If you remember mnemonically, this is the the velocity, the linear velocity of the original frame do, 2 represented in frame 2, mnemonically those two should be the same because this is the rotation from 2 to 0, we decided not to write, and uh, 0 is the frame in which it is written this way. Okay, so I can can decompose the rotation from the base frame to the frame 2 as the rotation from the base frame to 1 and from 1 to 2. Again, mnemonically, I have 2 and 2 here and I have 1 and 1 here. Okay? And so this is correct. Okay? So now, uh, I can just use those relationships and put it in this one. Okay? And if I do, I came up with this equation. Uh, do one, we do, we can do it easily, very quickly.
can uh, left multiply by R1 transpose, that is the inverse of uh, R1. In the end, uh, we should have only this one, because we can then multiply by the inverse of R12. R12 transpose is R21, okay? This is uh, the convention that we used for our, for our uh, rotations. And then we have uh, that I call Jacobian. And I do use the same, the same convention that we did for the homogeneous transformation matrices and for the rotation matrices. Now, but this is related to velocities. Can I use these results for the mapping of linear forces and momentum? Yes. I just say, okay, let us apply the kin kinematic, the kinetostatic or kinematic static duality, and uh, I can uh, easily verify that forces and moment are mapped according to this other Jacobian, that is the transpose of the same Jacobian. Okay? And we can give uh, also a physical interpretation <laughs> that is consistent with the interpretation that we gave in, in physics, luckily. Is the 
relationship, the relationship is this, is this one. If I do know the thoughts and moments acting the region of the frame 2, for example, I can easily compute thoughts and moments acting here. And, uh, well, the duality can be appreciated. For the thoughts, I only need to rotate the corresponding vector. So the, the dual with the, the linear force is, uh, let me say, similar to the angular velocity. On the other hand, for the moment, I also need to consider the, the cross product that take into account the, display, the displacement vector expressed in the proper frame. Okay?